Hi. Today we're back for one last video with this particular PCB that we got from JLC PCB. I wasn't going to do another part on this uh, design, but there were still a few questions and interesting points in the comments section from the previous video, and I thought it might be quite nice just to try and address those and get a bit more closure. Now, the first point is basically around the construction of the inductor, also whether the inductor itself is transferring the sound to the PCB uh, because it is in contact and, you know, it may be making the sound from the inductor much louder than it actually would normally be. So one thing we're going to try today is winding an inductor, a 100 microhenry inductor on this core. I have got a couple of others. I think we're going to need about 40 turns on here. It might get a little bit tight. But basic, basically we'll be isolating the sound from the PCB to see if that changes anything. Also, if it's still a little bit noisy, we can also try potting this either in epoxy or dipping it into wax or something like that, just to see what effect that has. Now, the other point is about the ceramic capacitors that we've got on the board. And someone did mention it, and I meant to talk about it in the original video where I noticed the sound. Some of these uh, ceramic capacitors, particularly where they are seeing quite high changes in current, can make a sound, even though, you know, you wouldn't normally expect that. Ceramic capacitors are very microphonic, and particularly where the construction is large, like these capacitors, these are quite large, I think they're 1210 or something like that. So they do actually have quite large plates in there, and I have known designs in the past to make the sound entirely from the ceramic capacitors. And basically what's happening is, as we're chopping up the switching waveform, the switching waveform's up at 125 kilohertz, and we did modify this one to 300 kilohertz. You wouldn't hear that, that's well out of the audible range. But because we're chopping it up with our PWM waveform, and we're seeing quite high peak currents every time that we turn on the circuit through the enable pin, we're possibly hearing some sound from these ceramic capacitors. I don't know whether it's going to be the output or the two input capacitors, but I think that's what we're going to quickly try first. So I have a microphone, a lapel microphone, which will try and hover over the PCB. I'm not quite sure how accurate this is going to be because it's a, a omnidirectional microphone, so it can pick up sound from quite a wide range of angles. But let's see what happens when we hold it over the PCB. Maybe we can use this pen as sort of a sounding board and touch some of the components because I did notice when I probed the PCB, particularly on this ground... Um, gate pin with the oscilloscope it did change the tone but I don't know whether that is because we dampened the sound from the board onto the relatively soft matting that I've got on the uh, lab bench here but anyway let's see what happens so I'll just turn it on now let's see if anything changes when I press on the component slightly slight change there that is making a bit of a difference in the tone That is making a huge difference on that capacitor just there. Small difference on the tiny one there. And nothing on this capacitor. This one seems to be making a huge difference. So the majority of the tone appears to be coming from C3 just here. So we have our 24 volt supply coming in on these three vias. We've got two decoupling capacitors and into pin 10 on the switcher IC. The Switcher IC also has an internal regulator for the internal logic. That's just decoupled by C1 here. But actually, all of our switching noise and current is going from these three vias through the sense resistor and then into the LEDs. And this is the capacitor that's closest to that node. If we have a look at the data sheet, you can see again here. So 24 volts in. We've got two capacitors here instead of just the one. But then that capacitor that's nearest to this node here goes through this resistor, through the transistor, through our inductor and into our LEDs. So I don't think we're seeing huge currents into pin 10 here. I think we're just seeing our large currents going through this node here. And it just so happens that that capacitor is the one closest to that node. So what might be interesting now is to desolder those two capacitors temporarily and try replacing them with electrolytic capacitors which are not microphonic and see if we still get that same noise. So this poor PCB is getting hacked around quite a lot, but we've got a 100 nanofarad capacitor 
and then 150 microfarad electrolytic over the top of it. We do need that small capacitor there to keep the switcher IC working properly. So let's turn it on and see if we still get the same noise. And to me that sounds pretty much the same. Let's see if we can hear where the sound's coming from with the microphone once again. Again, we're getting quite a change of tone over here on C4. C4 is there to reduce the current ripple in the LED, but for testing, we can probably try removing that and see if that has any effect. So capacitor C4 is now gone. Let's turn it on. And that appears to have made a huge difference. I now cannot hear any tone from that PCB whatsoever. Let's try adjusting the frequency. No, it's pretty much silent. So it looks like that output capacitor was actually the problem. We did notice a slight change in tone at the start when I pressed on that, but the capacitor over here seemed to be having more of an impact. So I guess the final question is, was this a bad capacitor or is it just that those high currents that it's seeing are causing it to make quite a bit of noise? So we're gonna put a new capacitor on there and see if that changes anything and the tone is immediately back. So that is a brand new capacitor and it's still making the tone. It's nowhere near as loud, so there will be some differences between capacitors, but the tone is still there. Now, I do have a question, and that is how much current are we actually seeing going through this ceramic capacitor? So I think what we're gonna do is solder a one ohm resistor in series with this capacitor and see if we can have a look at what the waveforms look like. So unfortunately, we don't quite have enough resolution on this picoscope to be able to infer the current by having a probe either side of a 0.1 ohm resistor. And because the AC range is broken on one of my channels, I can't use the maximum dynamic range of the picoscope. But what we can actually see is the waveform out to the LED. So this is basically the node on the side of the inductor that is in contact with the LED. And this is the waveform that we're seeing. So this is the point where the LED is on and then the LED is off. And this is our PWM dimming waveform. So if I change the brightness, you can see the mark space ratio changing. If I change the frequency of the PWM waveform, you can see that reflected in how the waveform actually looks. So what this output capacitor is actually doing is it's not trying to smooth out this PWM waveform for dimming. What it's doing is it's reducing the ripple during the on time of the LED. So reducing the ripple at the switching frequency, which at the moment on this board is 300 kilohertz, but on the original design is about 125 kilohertz. And so what we're actually hearing is not an effect at the frequency where we're actually trying to operate the capacitor. It's just at this PWM frequency where we're seeing a large change in voltage as a result of the LED being turned on and off. And what's actually happening inside the capacitor is there's a whole bunch of layers. It's a multi-layer ceramic capacitor. And as they store charge, you get a slight change in size of each layer. So the thickness increases or decreases slightly as it charges and discharges. And we hear that as a tone, very similar to how a piezoelectric transducer operates. So what I've done is I've now removed that output capacitor and we've got the scope probe directly on the terminals for where the LED is connected. And if we have a look at the screen, what we can see is the switching waveform into the LED. Now, if we zoom out, we can see our low frequency waveform. This is our PWM dimming. So again, if I change the duty cycle here, you can see that changes, but we've still got all of that stuff going on at the top of the waveform. And that is our switching waveform from our switch mode power supply controller. So if we zoom back in, here we can see between the start of one of those waveforms and the end is about three microseconds, which is our 300 kilohertz switching frequency. So here we're building up energy in the inductor. So the transistor is on permanently, we're building up charge. And then this is where the switching regulator actually starts switching on and off at our 300 kilohertz switching rate. Now, what our capacitor is there for is to reduce the ripple in the LED. What we're seeing here is a slight voltage change, which for a diode results in quite a large change in current. So as soon as we place our capacitor across those two pads, 
what we should see is that ripple almost disappears. So I'll try and place it on now. And there we go. So you can see a pretty much flat line. I'll try zooming out and re-triggering. So let's change the trigger up to here. And I will now place the capacitor again across those two pads. And you can see now we get a very nice smooth waveform. So the capacitor is having quite a large effect both on the ripple current in the LED but also any EMI which is being emitted from the leads that go all the way to the LED. So it is performing an important function. What might be useful is to see if a electrolytic capacitor will do the job because obviously we're not going to get any tone from an electrolytic capacitor. So we've now got a 68 mic electrolytic capacitor gingerly soldered across those two pads. It was just one that I had to hand. That is about three times the value of the ceramic capacitor which was there originally. But now if we look at the waveform, actually it's had quite a significant effect on the waveform generally speaking. So we're not seeing that flat top. If we increase the duty cycle, I think we will do. But what it's actually having is that effect that I was talking about before, whereby we're almost seeing an average current into the LED that approximates the dimming that we're trying to do. So in fact, a large electrolytic capacitor would actually have a much better effect on the LED and the overall waveform than a smaller ceramic capacitor. But certainly it's got rid of the switching noise that we care about. So an electrolytic capacitor there is an option. So I think that's really quite an interesting outcome. Certainly I was not expecting all of the sound to be coming from the ceramic capacitors. It just sounded too loud for it to be coming from those. But the main thing about these is they are actually physically large and the layers are also quite large. So you get quite a large piezoelectric effect and thus quite a lot of sound can come from these capacitors. So really quite an interesting lesson there. Be very careful with using these in the audible region, particularly where you've got quite large currents or changes in voltage going on. Sadly, we didn't get to wind an inductor because it's turned out to be pointless. I was hoping that we'd actually get to do this and use the LCR meter to try and wind an inductor, but it turned out not to be related to that whatsoever. So really quite an interesting outcome. Um, there was a comment about the layout and maybe that had an effect. This layout is pretty much identical to that in the datasheet. There's a minor change to it. The final PCB has much larger planes and polygons between all of the pads. So that one should behave even better in terms of the performance of the PCB. But it turns out that is not what was causing the effect that we're hearing. So hopefully you found the video interesting and hopefully you learned something from that. And uh, when it comes to doing your own designs, you'll consider whether it's a sensible idea to use these on your PCB. So thanks for the comments and until next time, thanks for watching.